arrested by the Azov and SBU men. They bat me on the head and legs with a chain, fired a gun close to my ear, threatened to shoot me in the head or to shoot my feet. They humiliated me and said they were going to rape me. They threatened to bring my wife and daughters in and torture them in front of me. I could not eat for three days. Azov was one of those many battalions. They are what they are. Rechtsextreme Strippen hier hätten wir das sagen. Ultranationalistische Leute, die sowohl die Politik als auch die Wirtschaft unter ihrer Kontrolle hätten. Wer ihnen nicht passt, der würde aus dem Weg geräumt. Russischsprachige Menschen würden unterdrückt, gefoltert und misshandelt. Ein Regime des Unrechts würde herrschen. Und genau das müsste man beseitigen. Outlets have been portraying the Ukrainian military surrender at Mariupol's Azov style factory as an evacuation. Former Marine Corps intelligence analyst Scott Ritter says the terminology is part of a battle of how the warring side perceived. The reality is um, it doesn't take uh, a, a huge stretch of the imagination to paint um, the defense of uh, Mariupol and Azov style uh, plant as heroic and uh, to use this as a rallying cry. And this is a battle of perception over reality. Um, you know, the perception of an evacuation implies that there was a negotiation and that Kiev was able to prevail in the negotiation to successfully um, extricate the defenders of Mariupol from uh, the Russian grasp. Uh, and I, I think that's why that they're portraying it this way, because to to say otherwise that this was a desperate plea for survival uh, and that uh, the only reason why the defenders of Mariupol are um, alive today is because of the humanitarian nature of, of Russia. Ukraine can't admit this, that would be to admit defeat, so Ukraine is spinning it in a way that makes it look as though Ukraine somehow um, won this battle uh, and was able to negotiate the evacuation of the survivors.